What's up everybody? I hope everyone's having a wonderful week so far. So for this week's video, I wanted to sit down and talk about Hollow Scream uh, 2019 for Tampa. Uh, we're going to speculate on what houses I think are going to be leaving the event, staying at the event, what scare zones I think are leaving, what scare zones I think are staying, um, as well as a pretty interesting rumor that has recently surfaced and is kind of spreading around just a little bit, uh, which you probably kind of got a hint at uh, with the thumbnail and everything. We're going to talk about that, and I also went on to our Twitter and asked some of our followers over there if there's any topics they like, would like me to cover, uh, and I got a few questions and topics with that, so uh, we'll do that at the end of the video, go through those. I'm um, going to try and make this as quick as possible, um, just because I could honestly go into so much detail with this video, but I don't want to make the video super long and bore you guys, so I'll try and make it as quick as possible and as entertaining as possible for you. So. Let's get into it. So, first and foremost, this year for Hollow Scream Tampa, <clears throat> excuse me, marks the 20th anniversary for the event. It's the 20th year, 20 years of, of Bush Gardens doing Hollow Scream in Tampa. Uh, last year was Williamsburg, Williamsburg's 20th year. So it'll be interested to see what kind of stuff they do this year, what ticket sales, um, you know, deals they have, what things they bring to the event to celebrate the 20 years of Hollow Scream. It'll be interesting to see what they might do to celebrate the 20 years. Are they gonna bring back uh, Seventh House? Are they gonna add more scare zones, more shows? Who knows? So it'll be very interesting to see what they do in marketing wise leading up to the 20th year of uh, Hollow Scream. So now knowing that, let's start with what houses I think are going to stay at the event. And then we'll talk about the ones that are, uh, that I think have left and I know for one, for a fact, is gone. Um, but we'll start with what I think is going to stay. Uh, obviously, Insomnia and Simon Slaughterhouse, I think, are for sure going to stay. They're the two newest ones from last year that were very, very popular. Uh, Insomnia was my favorite house of the year last year. I thought it was a really cool design, uh, the way they designed it. There was a lot of really cool effects that they had. And from everyone that I talked to that worked the event or guests that were at the event and just seeing people's reactions on social media and everything like that. Everyone seemed to love that house and I think it was a fan favorite for a lot of people. Simon Slaughter House, on the other hand, I think was very 50-50. I know for me, I actually enjoyed it more when I went through uh, pre-dress rehearsal than I did uh, dress rehearsal and the event itself. Uh, personally, I don't think I really saw what the whole 17 and up recommendation thing was. Um, as well as the scare zone, which we'll get into that later, but I didn't really see the big deal. I do think it's going to come back though because uh, it was very popular and always had an insanely long line. I mean, the line for that house was so long they had to take out all of the scare actors that were inside of the scare zone leading up to that house. So I think if it's a big crowd bringer, that's a thing, um, I, I feel like it's going to stay because it brought a lot of attention to the event last year with it being recommended 17 and up, which again, I don't know why it was because I, there was nothing in there that was crazy and, you know, over the top where it needed to be recommended 17 and up in my opinion, but who knows. And of course we have Motel Hell, which is another fan favorite for a lot of people, but one of my favorite houses to go through. Such a really cool designed house as well. It's also one of, and I've said this I think uh, multiple times before, but it's also one of the most detailed houses I've seen. A lot of people don't understand how detailed that house is because they don't get to see it with the lights on, which I think is very unfortunate. Um, it's something I think I would love to see Bush do, is do like lights on tours like other parks do. Because um, I feel like that house is very underrated, but it's also a very good house, and I think that one's going to stay one more year. I think this year's its fourth year, if I'm not mistaken. It's the fourth year for, for it, so it's probably going to stick around because that one also always has quite a, a long line. Uh, you know, when the event is going on. Now, Deathwater Bayou is also a very big fan favorite house. Um, and I've, I've been I'm very iffy on this one because last year it was named Death of the Queen, which would, I guess, lead people to believe that it's the last uh, year for that house. I don't know if that's the case. It's the same thing with the Clown House. It was called The Last Laugh for the longest time. I think the last four years of the house, it was called The Last Laugh and it still came back every single time. And I, th I feel like that's what's gonna happen with Deathwater. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere just yet uh, because it is usually one of the busiest houses. I also personally think that's because it's at the front of the park 
and it's like the first house that people run into. But it's also a very good house. It's always getting good scares. They have really good, um, I think the best thing about that house is actually the bungees. The bungees in that house are amazing. They're so awesome, and they get me almost every time and I know where they're at, every single time. And it's still, it's, it's a really cool themed house. Um, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere this year. They could surprise me and take it out and end up uh, bringing three new houses this year. It'd be kind of cool to see. Uh, it's, I don't think it's anything they've done before, but uh, I, I do think it's gonna end up staying uh, at least one more year. Moving on to a house that I particularly did not enjoy um, each year that it has been at the event, which is Black Spot. Now I love pirates. I love anything pirate themed. I just was not a fan of Black Spot. I don't know what it was about that house. Um, There's just something about it I didn't enjoy. I think it was a little too short. Um, I do like how they like last year added a, an entire new area to it. I thought that was pretty cool. And I also don't know if it's because my first year doing HOS, I uh, was I did media for that house, so I saw the insides and outsides of that house very extensively. So I don't know if it's just because I had been through it so many times and was in it with the lights on and when it, we weren't like necessarily in, in character and costume, that kind of stuff. The event wasn't going on, so I don't know if that's maybe the reason why. There's just something about that house that I don't think um, I liked, but I don't think it's coming back this year either. And it's not because of, I think, what most people think the reason is, which is Tigris being there. That area was actually not affected at all with Tigris being built. The, the queue for, for um, Black Spot is still there. It's actually part of uh, plans for Hollow Scream. So that whole house area is still there. That area is still going to be used for queuing for Hollow Scream. Uh, but Black Spot, I don't think, is there anymore. I think they're going to turn it into something new. Uh, which, in my opinion, I am happy with. I know some people might not like it, but I myself am glad that it. I think it's not there. I don't know for sure. None of this is obviously accurate and or true. It's rumors, speculation, but I don't think it's there anymore. Um, and I really, <laughs> personally, hope it's not. And I don't mean it, you know, bad in any way. I just really don't want to see Black Spot come back. <laughs> and last but not least, which I think is the most obvious of houses that aren't coming back. Um, is Unearthed. Obviously Unearthed was inside of Gwazi, the little queuing area for Gwazi, and if a few of you may not know, but Gwazi is being turned into an RMC coaster, and since they are in full-on construction for the new Gwazi ride, obviously they cannot put a house there, so that house is gone. Uh, I don't think that that means there will be only five houses this year instead of six. I think they're just gonna move the house location from where Gwazi was over to uh, where Santa's house is for Christmas Town. I always kind of forget that area. It's back where uh, ZCU was its first year, um, kind of in between Rhino Rally and uh, that train station that's right over there. I always forget the name of that area, but um, I think that they're going to end up putting a house over in that area and just obviously leaving Gwazi to, to be, um, you know, continued with construction and everything like that. Because actually, I think it'll be very, very close to, being very close to done by the time Hollow Scream rolls around, because it's supposed to open 2020 anyways, and obviously Hollow Scream's at the end of the year, so they'll be very, very busy in that area, so I think they have had a house location there before, I think that area is what they're going to be putting um, the one of the new houses in, is that little area there. And they could also technically use the zombie bumper car area. I don't know if many of you know, but there also used to be a house in that location many, many years ago as well. But I don't see them doing that because the zombie bumper cars are, I think last year was like zombie clown bumper cars, was very popular and always is very popular. So I don't see them doing anything with that. I think that'll stay there as well. I just think that they'll move a house over to that little area by the old Rhino Rally ride. Now, one of the hard things to speculate on with Hollow Scream is what houses are going to come to the event because the majority, not the majority, actually all of Hollow Scream's houses are originals. So unless you know someone on the inside that knows something, you're not really gonna know what's coming to the event. But I would like to see them do a 20 year anniversary um, house like Williamsburg did last year where they had a bunch of their fan favorite houses and uh, scenes from different houses of past and previous years. And they put that all into all together inside of this giant house, and uh, from seeing media um, videos on YouTube of the house and 
seeing it, you know, in action during the event on YouTube and everything like that. Uh, I think Hall Stream in Tampa could use something like that. I feel like fans would really enjoy that because there's a lot of houses that are no longer at the event that a lot of people miss. Like for me, Blood Asylum. I love that house. That house was so good. And I would love to see it come back in a little reunion house. Um, I hope that that's what they do. Um, I mean, who knows, honestly. I feel like, I feel like they're going to do it. I mean, if, if Williamsburg did it, I don't see why Hall of Scream Tampa wouldn't do it, but who knows. All right, and moving on, now that houses are done, let's go on to the scare zones, and I will, I guess, start with the two scare zones that I think will return, which are going to be Camp DOA and uh, Hell on Wheels. Now, Camp DOA was really cool. I loved that scare zone. I thought it was really, I got to walk through there a lot last year um, as an actor, and walking through there every time and watching some of my friends uh, scare the crap out of people it was absolutely hilarious. Um, and then that was another scare zone that, listening to reactions from fans and seeing things that they posted online, um, I think will return. Usually they kind of keep a scare zone in that area for a couple years. Wasteland was there for two years. Um, so I think that area and the person that usually creates the scare zones kind of keeps them there for a little bit. So I think that one is going to stay. Plus it was designed really well too. It was such a cool, such a cool area. It's kind of creepy. Um, redneck uh, camp ground thing with a very, I don't know if anyone saw it, but it was a very, very knockoff Jason character that was in the um, in that zone. And it's nice because I can actually say all this now because I don't work for Bush, so I can actually speak my mind. Um, not that, you know, half the stuff I say is bad about the event anyways. I love the event, but that was a very much knockoff version of Jason. And of course, my favorite scare zone of the entire event last year was Hell on Wheels. And I'm bummed I didn't really get to experience it as much as I would have liked to, and it didn't really become my favorite scare zone until like towards the end of the uh, the run of the event, because I started to be able to actually scare in that zone. My horde would run over there, and we'd go scare and hunt inside of Hell on Wheels. And man, it was one of the coolest zones ever. It's basically like a glorified wasteland. If anyone remembers what wasteland was, where it's you know post post apocalyptic kind of like think of like a post galactic post-apocalyptic scene mixed with like Mad Max and a bunch of just metal music playing constantly. It was amazing. It was so much fun to be in. It was a really cool zone. They did a lot of really cool stuff with it. Uh, I, again, I think it was one of the most popular scare zones last year, so I think that's going to come back as well. I would like to see it come back. I really hope it does because there's a lot of really cool stuff I want to do inside that zone this year as, like a, as a filming um, aspect. Obviously, I'm not scaring this year, but there's a lot of really cool stuff I want to try and do filming wise in that zone so I really hope it comes back so I get the opportunity to do that at least. We also have Meat Market which was a recommended 17 and up scare zone that you would walk through that led you into Simon Slaughterhouse which was recommended 17 and up and again I don't know why it was recommended 17 and up there was really nothing that like threw it over the top that made it seem like it should have been recommended for 17 and up uh, but it was and I, I like that scare zone. It's more than likely going to be back because so I think Simon Slaughterhouse will be back. And if that's back, they'll still have that same kind of walking through the scare zone to get to the house uh, because they kind of go with each other, which I think is kind of unfortunate because they need it was that house, Simon Slaughterhouse, would get so packed that it would the line would go all the way down into Meat Market and they would take out that scare zone and all the actors inside the scare zone for safety reasons and put them somewhere else, which kind of defeats the purpose of the scare zone because if you can't have your actors in it then it's not really a scare zone so it doesn't really make sense I personally think they need to move that somewhere else I don't think they will uh, unless they move Simon Slaughterhouse to a different area but um, I do like Meat Market, I thought that's pretty cool uh, it's themed really well uh, that area, the area is good for scare zones I just don't think they should have put a new house there um, and I hopefully you know, with this coming up here and, and seeing what happened, they'll change it just a little bit and maybe they'll uh, direct the line in different ways to make sure the line doesn't get so crazy that it backs up that scare zone and then ruins it. Um, I'm really curious to see if they take out the recommended 17 and up um, uh, label or, you know, marketing for that, for both the house and the scare zone. Uh, but part of me feels like they're probably not going to. <laughs> And another scare zone from last year was Deadly Toys, and that was back in like the Sesame Street area. Um, I really don't think that's going to come back. It didn't really do very well last year. Uh, a lot of it, uh, there's a lot of changes that happened to that um, zone 
last year that I don't think uh, there's going to be a reason why I don't think it's going to come back. Um, plus, they've had kind of like a toyish uh, scare zone for quite some time because I think before Deadly Toys, they also had Playground. And um, it's just kind of two similarly themed scare zones. So I think if you do it again, it's just going to kind of get a little too old and people aren't really going to enjoy it too much. So I don't really think Deadly Toys will come back. I would like to see something different in that area because uh, they can do a lot of really scary stuff with that, with that zone because it's so dark. It's one of the darkest scare zones. Uh, in the entire park. There's almost no lights at all in that area. If you've been through it, you know how dark it is. So it would be cool to see them do something more scary, um, in my opinion. Now the next one, which is Maniac Midway, um, which was over in Pantopia, and that whole entire area was a scare zone. This one I, I, I'm kind of confused on because I don't know if they're going to bring it back. I can't decide myself if they're going to bring it back or not because at, I was one of the main areas I scared in last year. Um, and sometimes it was completely dead in that area because there's no house over there like there used to be. Uh, and then other nights it was just super busy. But again, it's clowns. They've been doing clowns for the longest time. They usually always have clowns in that area uh, anyways. So I don't know. I don't know if they're going to bring it back. I feel like they will, but I honestly don't... But I, wouldn't, I would like them not to. Like I would like to see them do something different. Um, but I don't know. It's just that one I, I really can't decide too much on. But... For now, I'm going to say that it's probably going to come back, um, just because everyone loves clowns. I mean, let's be real. Everyone loves clowns. Or loves to hate clowns. And last but not least for scare zones is probably the most marketed scare zone from last year, which is Day of the Dead. Which is something that was actually very, very surprised they did last year. Usually Bush kind of doesn't do anything that's very uh, uh, touchy with like religion or anything like that. But they did that scare zone very well, but it was not a scare zone. Even though they named it as a scare zone, it was definitely not a scare zone by any means. Uh, it was more of like a, a walkthrough or a them thematic walkthrough. Um, because the scare actors were not allowed to scare anybody, they were supposed to act afraid uh, of people and run away from them and things like that, which I honestly don't know why they would want to do something like that, but they did. It worked out very well. People loved it. Uh, it, was, it was fun to walk through, getting to listen to Spanish music and dance while in character was a lot of fun uh, while I'm holding a chainsaw and you know pretending it is my dance partner it was a lot of fun but I don't think that's gonna come back it did really well but I don't see them bringing that back cuz I mean it's not it's not a scare zone and I think a lot of people complained about it even though it was cool to go through and people liked it I don't think it people really enjoyed the fact that it wasn't necessarily a scare zone. You, there was nobody getting scared in there. I mean, there are a, a few people, I'm sure, that reacted to, you know, people in costume because there's people that are, you know, e that easily scared. But that's just, that's one I don't see them bringing back this year. All right, so for rumor news, uh, there has been a rumor that has been going around that Hollow Scream in Tampa might be free this year. Um, with, obviously, uh, you know, some limitations, sort of. But for those that don't know, uh, Hollow Scream in Williamsburg, and I believe in San Antonio as well, uh, Hollow Scream is included with admission to the park, and it's also included if you're a past member. Uh, it's a lot like Christmas Town at Bush Gardens here in Tampa. That you know, if you're in the park while the event starts, you're good to go. You don't have to pay pay any you know separate fees for a separately ticket you know a separate ticket to get into the event. It is completely free while you're there. Uh, there's a rumor that Hollow Scream might go that route. For this year, I mean, it, and it's possible. It is their 20th anniversary, so maybe they'll have this big surprise of, you know, hey guys, the event's free now for past members and it's included in, with your admission to the park. Um, I think that will do really well for the park uh, at a business standpoint. I don't, however, think it would be good for actors and or guests because obviously it's just going to make it more busy. And in my opinion, I always hated busy nights because it's harder to get scares that way. It's... It's definitely not safe for actors, and even though Hollow Scream might not be very popular for most people, um, it was always busy Saturday, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays was always busy. Saturdays typically being the worst day, and it was kind of unsafe. But from a, dis uh, a biz business standpoint, I do think it would be very good for them. I think they'd make more money that way because uh, it would entice more people to come. And then more people, meaning they can raise their prices for front of the line fear and their express and their tours, everything like that, which people would do because of the event being so busy. So I think they would make more money that way. Um, however, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think they're going to do that this year. 
I personally hope that they don't, uh, maybe in the future, but at least for this year, I, I don't think they will, they'll, they'll do it. I don't see them doing that anytime soon um, either, but who knows, maybe in the future. And moving on, um, now I was going to talk about Fiends because Fiends is coming back. Um, even though it was not announced by Bush, they are holding auditions for Fiends. So that's pretty much a, you know, guarantee that it's coming back. Uh, but I'm going to touch on that with some of the uh, questions and topics that uh, I got from Twitter. So I will talk about that uh, during those because there is a few things that I think might happen with Fiends this year. Um, but like I said, I'll get to that with the, in the questions. All right, so uh, I went on to Twitter and asked some of our followers to um, let me know if there was any like topics, questions, or anything like that they wanted me to cover for this video. Um, we got a few responses, which is awesome, so thank you guys for uh, commenting and asking your questions. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get into those. So up first is Adam Sinclair. Uh, he's, he asked, houses uh, with new leadership and coasters, how will it change ticket specials, and theme. So I really don't think it's gonna change too much. Um, theming wise, I think that they're still gonna go with the whole um, nowhere to hide theme, like Hollow Scream is the theme, which they've been doing for a couple of years now. Um, I would like to see them do an icon, especially since it's the 20th anniversary. It'd be cool to see them bring back an icon. Uh, I don't see that happening though. And I feel like they will probably just stick with the whole theme of just nowhere to hide and Hollow Scream being the theme. Ticket specials, they'll more than likely still do ticket specials, like for example last year. Uh, I can't remember exactly what month it was or what era, but they were selling tickets for like $25, which is absolutely insane. And it brought so many people to the event. Um, I, I do think that they will be doing that, um, just I'm not sure when. And it also depends on whether or not the event does in fact end up being free. Um, but like I said, I don't think it's gonna happen, but it could change if the event ends up being free for uh, you know the past members and free with admission. So the next couple questions uh, comes from our good friends over at the uh, Hunters Podcast. Uh, if you guys don't listen to Hunters Podcast, you definitely should. It's a wonderful podcast about uh, haunts, ha Halloween, horror, all the fun stuff, all the good stuff. They are great guys have great conversations. So if you're a fan of Halloween Horror Nights, um, Hollow Scream, Haunts in general, they always have good conversations. They're also doing uh, haunt reviews, or they, they do haunt reviews, uh, reviews on horror movies. Great guys, awesome people. So check them out uh, pretty much anywhere. You could find a podcast, you, uh, YouTube, Spotify, uh, Podbean. I'm sure I'm forgetting others. We should definitely go check them out. They ask, do you think there's gonna be more than one show and uh, more houses or same number as last year. So I definitely don't think there's gonna be another show and the reason why I say that is because if there was gonna be another show, they'd have auditions for it. Uh, and right now the only auditions that are posted are for Fiends um, and Christmas Town. So if they're already doing auditions for their Christmas event um, and not another Halloween show, I, I don't think they're gonna bring another show to the event. I would like them to. I think it'd be really cool to have another show. It would definitely do uh, wonders for crowd control, which sometimes the park needs, but I, I don't see them bringing another uh, uh, show to the event, unfortunately. And I do think that they will keep six houses. I don't think there will be more, and I don't think there will be less. I think they're going to keep six houses more than likely, um, unless they use the area where Demented Dimensions used to be, um, which I think they should and need to, but I'm uh, pretty sure they use that for storage for their Christmas Town event, so I don't, I don't think they're going to end up using that one. Uh, and I think they'll end up keeping just six houses, unfortunately. I would like to see them bring back seven. I think they need it. Again, crowd control. It would be really well for crowd control, but uh, I think they'll stay down to six. And our next question comes from our friend Katie, who asks, do you think we might get any houses or scare zones from Williams from the Williamsburg event? Uh, they had Demented Dimensions last year. Now, I touched on it just a little bit with the, the you know anniversary house. Um, I would like to see them bring that house to the event. I don't think they'd bring anything else, uh, unfortunately. I think it would be a really cool idea. Personally, I would like to see them bring the Frostbite house, uh, just because from videos I've seen online and everything like that, the house looks really cool, and I think it would do really well down here. So I, I, would, I would like them to bring that to the event. But I, if they do bring anything, I more than likely will think, since it's the 20th anniversary, they'll bring like the ideas uh, from Williamsburg that they did with the 20th anniversary house over there. 
not necessarily bring that house because it wouldn't make sense, but they'll take that idea and bring that idea to the event for this year. And the next question comes from Brent Matheson, uh, who asks, uh, what sort of add-ons can we expect? <coughs> expect, excuse me. Will they be as robust as last year? I got the pre-hunt meal for the built-in front-of-line privileges. Any reason to believe things will change? And um, to answer the last question, no, probably not. Typically, they kind of do the same thing. Uh, they'll more than likely still have the uh, fright feast, which is what you're talking about, where you can um, you come in a little bit early, you get to eat food it's like a giant buffet, which is typically always the same food every year, and uh, you get like a, a show with uh, your food, and then you get two hours of uh, front of the line for every single house one time, which is nice because if you go on a busy day, like a Saturday night or something like that, you can get almost every single house done in that two hour frame because you get to go straight to the front of the line. Um, on off days like you know Thursdays and sometimes Fridays, you can get the entire event done, all the houses in less than two hours uh, with it. So it's a very good deal. They're more than likely gonna do it again this year. Um, they do it every year. What I would like to see them do with that though is bring Fiends back into Dragonfire Grill, which is where they do Fright Feast because I know a lot of people complained last year about only having a 10 minute preview um, of Fiends in that area uh, because Fiends is back inside of Stanleyville. I would like to see them take Fiends back out of Stanleyville and put it back into Dragonfire so it can be part of the Fright Feast. So one, you got happy, happy customers, but also because of crowd control, again, because I'm pretty sure that Tigris is gonna be open for Hollow Scream. Uh, and so is, uh, obviously there's gonna be a house back there. And then right next to all, or both of those, you also have Stanleyville Theater. So you have Stanleyville Theater that's here, you have Tigris, then you have a house. And when Stanleyville Theater lets out for Fiends, there's just a huge crowd of people every time. And even with just ha having that there in a house, it was always crowded. So now having a brand new coaster that just opened up a few months prior, uh, a show in the house, there's just gonna be a lot of people there. So I would like to see them take that out put it back into Dragonfire, and then you have crowd control, there's not a, a you know, crap ton of people there, so it's not a safety issue. It doesn't make one house super busy, or one ride super busy. And then you also have everyone happy who has Fright Feast, because now they get to see Fiends again included with that, uh, on top of having the you know two hours of front of line access as well. But I don't think you know anything will change, or there'll be any new special deals. They typically keep the same thing every time, unfortunately. And the last question comes from Craig Willix. I also hope I've pronounced all these names right, so if I haven't, I'm sorry. Um, he asks, can you talk about ticket options, please? Uh, only going for one night, so should I get the front of the line ticket so I can get into all the houses and do a couple of rides? Thanks. Now, honestly, that depends on a couple things. One, it depends on if the event ends up being free this year. Uh, if so, then I would say absolutely get the front of the line pass because the event will be pretty much busy more than likely every single night. Um, which in that case you're probably going to need to get front of the line so that you can get through all the houses as quickly as possible That way you can get on some of the rides uh, and everything like that Now if it does not end up being free, it honestly depends on what day you go um, Thursdays, you're not going to need it. I can tell you that right now Thursdays are almost never busy. You can probably get through every single house Twice maybe even sometimes three times Even if it starts kind of getting busy towards the middle of the night towards the end of the night There's no one there so you'll more than likely get to go through everything. I would say save your money, and uh, if you're going on a Thursday, if it's possible, don't worry about front of the line, don't even worry about it, don't get it. You're not gonna need it. Fridays, sometimes, um, so I'd say Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, get it just in case, especially Saturdays. If you're going on a Saturday, get it. It'll be worth the money because Saturdays are always busy, and that way you can get everything done as fast as possible. That way you can get on rides. Or do Fright Feast, um, spend a little bit extra money, uh, for Fright Feast. Um, right now, unfortunately, like I said, we don't really know too much about tickets because nothing has been announced for the event, so there's not too much known if they'll up the prices on anything or not, but usually Fright Feast is just a little bit more money. Um, so get Fright Feast and you can get free food. Well, not free food, you paid for it, but still you get food <laughs> with the uh, the ticket. Um, and you get the two hours in front of the line for all the houses and that way you can spend the rest of the night going through scare zones or um, you know, going on rides and you know, things like that. All right, guys, so that is it. That's all I have for you guys so far. Hopefully, Hollow Scream will be announcing something soon. Typically, they will. I know last year around this time, they've already started kind of to hint and tease stuff, so they should be announcing something very soon. Uh, hopefully, I did not bore you guys too much. 
Uh, if you stuck around this far, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. Again, uh, if you have any comments, questions, anything like that, comment down below. I'd love to talk to you guys if you didn't get a chance to ask us anything on Twitter. And if you didn't this time, maybe next time you can, you can go over there, follow us, Misfits Unmanage on Twitter, and follow us on uh, other social media like Instagram and Facebook, both Misfits Unmanage. And of course, if you like what you see here and you want to see more with future haunts and future information on haunts, theme park related things, horror related things, all that fun stuff, uh, subscribe, consider subscribing, it'd be awesome. If you like the video, like it. If you didn't like it, don't like it. It's up to you, I'm not your boss. Thank you guys for watching and until next time, stay spooky.